同胞们 ，Fellow compatriots, dear friends. Today, we gather here on this solemn occasion to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to the motherland and hold the inaugural ceremony of the sixth term government of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region (SAR). At the outset, I wish to extend cordial greetings to all Hong Kong residents. And my warm congratulations to Mr. Lee Ka Chiu, the newly inaugurated sixth term chief executive of the Hong Kong SAR, and to principal officials of the sixth term Hong Kong SAR government and members of the executive council. I also express heartfelt appreciation to all fellow Chinese, both at home and overseas, and foreign friends for their support for the cause of one country, two systems, and Hong Kong's prosperity and stability. The history of over 5,000 years civilization of the Chinese nation keeps records of our forefathers tilling the land here in southern China. China's modern history following the Opium War records not just the humiliation of the forced session of Hong Kong, but also the historic, the heroic struggle made by the sons and daughters of the Chinese nation for national salvation. The centenary history of the Communist Party of China rallying and leading the people in an extraordinary endeavor carries chapters of the unique and significant contribution of our compatriots in Hong Kong. Throughout history, Hong Kong compatriots have always stood together with the motherland, rain or shine. And the bond that links us is truly inseparable. Hong Kong's return to the motherland opened a new epoch in the history of Hong Kong. Over the past 25 years, with the full support of the motherland and common efforts of the government of the Hong Kong SAR and people of all sectors, the practice of one country, two systems has achieved success in Hong Kong, recognized by all. Since its return to the motherland, Hong Kong has been a pioneer riding the wave of our country's great cause of reform and opening up. It has leveraged its role as an important window and bridge connecting the Chinese mainland with the world and has thus made an irreplaceable contribution to the miracle of long-term, steady and fast economic development of the motherland. Hong Kong has become an integral part of the country's overall development and has actively aligned with national development strategies. It has continued to maintain its strengths of being highly free and open and comfortable with international rules. Indeed, Hong Kong has played an important role in advancing the new paradigm of China's opening up on a larger scale, across more areas, and in greater depth. 
Exchanges and cooperation between Hong Kong and the mainland have expanded across the board, and the mechanisms for such exchanges and cooperation have been steadily improved. The stage for Hong Kong competitors to start business and achieve success has become increasingly broader. Since its return to the motherland, Hong Kong has overcome various difficulties and challenges and forged ahead with steady steps. Be it the global financial crisis, COVID-19, or some intense social upheaval, nothing has stopped Hong Kong's advance. Over the past 25 years, Hong Kong has enjoyed robust economic growth. It's maintained its status as an international financial, shipping and trading center, and its innovation and technology industry has developed rapidly. Its economy is one of the freest and most open in the world and it boasts a world-class business environment. Hong Kong's pre-existing laws, including the common law, have been preserved and developed. Its social programs are flourishing, and its society has remained stable as a whole. As an international metropolis, Hong Kong enjoys vitality that is the admiration of the world. Since Hong Kong's return to the motherland, Hong Kong compatriots have become masters of their own destiny. The realization of Hong Kong people administering Hong Kong and a high degree of autonomy has marked the beginning of true democracy in Hong Kong. Over the past 25 years, the constitutional order of the SAR, which is based on China's constitution and the basic law of the SAR, has functioned smoothly. The overall jurisdiction of the central authorities have been enforced, and the SAR's high degree of autonomy has been exercised in the right way. The Hong Kong National Security Law has been adopted, providing the institutions and norms for upholding national security in the Hong Kong SAR. Hong Kong's electoral system has been amended and improved, ensuring the implementation of the principle of patriots administering Hong Kong. The Hong Kong SAR's democratic system is in keeping with the policy of one country, two systems, and Hong Kong's constitutional status. It has served to ensure the democratic rights of Hong Kong residents and to maintain Hong Kong's prosperity and stability and it holds bright prospects for the future. Fellow compatriots, dear friends, the policy of one country, two systems is a great initiative that has no president to follow. The underlying goal of the policy of one country, two systems is to uphold China's sovereignty, security, and development interests, and to maintain long-term prosperity and stability in Hong Kong and Macau. Everything the central government has done is for the benefit of our country, of Hong Kong and Macau, and of our fellow compatriots in Hong Kong and Macau. At the meeting celebrating the 20th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to the motherland, I stressed the two points that the central authorities would stick to regarding implementation of the policy of one country, two systems. 
First, the policy should be implemented unswervingly without deviating or wavering. Second, the policy should be applied fully and faithfully without being bent or distorted. Today, I wish to highlight once more that the policy of one country, two systems, having been tested and proved time and again, meets the fundamental interests of the country and the Chinese nation, and those of Hong Kong and Macau. It enjoys the full support of the more than 1.4 billion people of the motherland. It has the unanimous endorsement of Hong Kong and Macau residents and it is widely recognized by the international community. There is no reason to change such a good system, and it must be adhered to over the long run. Fellow compatriots, dear friends, a review of the past points the way to the future. The rich practice of the policy of one country, two systems in Hong Kong has left us much valuable experience and food for thought. 25 years of practice tells us that only with a deep and accurate understanding of the rules governing the policy's implementation can we ensure steadily in the right direction? First, we must implement the policy of one country to systems in both letter and spirit. The policy of one country to systems is an integral whole. Upholding our country's sovereignty, security and development interests is the paramount principle in the policy of one country to systems. On this basis, on the basis of this prerequisite, Hong Kong and Macau maintain their previous capitalist system over the long run and enjoy a high degree of autonomy. The socialist system is the fundamental system of the People's Republic of China and the leadership of the Communist Party of China is the defining feature of socialism with Chinese characteristics. All residents in the SAR shall conscientiously respect and uphold the fundamental system of our country. Full and faithful implementation of the policy of one country to systems will create immense development opportunities for Hong Kong and Macau. The more firmly the principle of one country is adhered to, the greater advantage the two systems will demonstrate in practice. Second, we must ensure the integration of overall jurisdiction of the central authorities and a high degree of autonomy in the SAR. With this return to the motherland, Hong Kong has been reincorporated into our country's governance system and the constitutional order of the SAR has been established under the fundamental guidance of the policy of one country, two systems. The central government's overall jurisdiction over the SAR 
provides the source of the SAR's high degree of autonomy. At the same time, the central authorities fully respect and firmly hold the high degree of autonomy enjoyed by the SAR as enshrined in law. Enforcing the central authorities' overall jurisdiction and upholding the SAR's high degree of autonomy are integral aspects of the same policy and only by ensuring both can we run the SAR truly well. The SAR adheres to the executive-led system. The executive, legislative, and judicial authorities perform their functions in accordance with the basic law and other relevant laws. The executive and the legislature of the executive, legislative and judicial authorities perform their functions in accordance with the basic law and other relevant laws. The executive and the legislature operate through checks and balances and in coordination, and the judiciary exercises judicial power independently in accordance with the law. Third, we must implement the principle of patriots administering Hong Kong, keeping political power in the hands of patriots is a political rule commonly practiced in the world. No people in any country or region in the world will ever allow political power to fall into the hands of forces or individuals who do not love or would even sell out or betray their own country. To keep the power to administer the Hong Kong SAR firmly in the hands of patriots is essential for safeguarding the long-term governance and security of Hong Kong. At no time should this principle be allowed to be compromised. Protecting the power to administer is protecting Hong Kong's prosperity and stability as well as the interests of the over 7 million Hong Kong residents. Fourth, we must maintain Hong Kong's unique status and strengths. The central authorities have always handled Hong Kong affairs from a strategic and overarching perspective, with the starting point and ultimate goal always to uphold the fundamental and long-term interests of both our country and Hong Kong. Hong Kong's fundamental interests are consistent with the fundamental interests of the country. The heart of the central government and the heart of our Hong Kong compatriots always beat together. Enjoying the backing of the motherland while staying connected with the world is a notable strength unique to Hong Kong. A strength cherished by both Hong Kong residents and the central authorities. The central government 
fully supports Hong Kong in maintaining its unique status and strengths on a long-term basis, in consolidating its role as an international financial shipping and trading center, in maintaining its free, open and sound business environment, in retaining its common law system, and in expanding smooth and convenient linkages with the rest of the world. The Central Authorities trust that in the historical course of building a modern socialist country in all respects and achieving the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, Hong Kong will have an even greater contribution to make. Fellow compatriots, Dear friends, in the Chinese people and the Chinese nation's great advance from standing up to becoming prosperous and growing its strength, our Hong Kong compatriots have never been absent. Now, Hong Kong is at a new stage of moving from chaos to governance and then from governance to greater prosperity. The next five years will be crucial for Hong Kong to break new ground and launch a new takeoff. Hong Kong faces both opportunities and challenges. And there are more opportunities than challenges. Both the central government and people across all social sectors in Hong Kong have high hopes for the new government of the SAR. And people of all ethnic groups in China wish the best for Hong Kong. Here, I want to express four hopes for Hong Kong. First, strive to improve governance, enhancing the system and capacity for governance and boosting its advocacy is of pressing importance for the development of the Hong Kong SAR. As administrators of Hong Kong, the chief executive and the SAR government bear the primary responsibility for administering Hong Kong. You should all faithfully fulfill the oath of office, take solid steps to implement the policy of one country, two systems, uphold the authority of the basic law, and dedicate yourselves to the Hong Kong SAR. Officials should be selected on the basis of both integrity and competence. Outstanding individuals who are firm in their love for both the country and Hong Kong, professionally competent, and dedicated to serving the public should be extensively drawn into government service. The sense of national identity and a global vision should be highlighted. Plans for Hong Kong's development should be made with the overall and long-term requirements in mind. The philosophy of administration should be transformed and the relationship between the government and the market better balanced. This is to better promote both a well-functioning government and an efficient market. Government administration and conduct should be improved so that officials will demonstrate a new level of commitment and satisfactory performance and take on a new look of good governance. Second, keep strengthening the momentum of development. 
Hong Kong enjoys a unique position, favorable conditions, and broad space for development. The central authorities fully support Hong Kong in seizing the historic opportunities presented by our country's development and in aligning with national strategies such as the fourth five-year plan, the development of the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area and the high-quality development of Belt and Road Corporation. The central authorities fully support Hong Kong in developing more extensive and closer exchanges and cooperation with the world and in attracting more people who aspire to start up businesses and fulfill their dreams in Hong Kong. The central authorities also fully support Hong Kong in advancing reforms in an active and prudent manner breaking the impediments of vested interests and fully unleashing the enormous creativity and development vitality of Hong Kong society. Third, take solid steps to address difficulties in people's lives. As the Chinese saying goes, those who get the benefits of the world take on responsibility for all. And those who enjoy the happiness of the world share concerns for all. As I have said, meeting the people's aspirations for a better life is the goal of all our work. At present, what the people of Hong Kong desire the most are a better life a bigger apartment, more business startup opportunities, better education for kids, and better elderly care. What the people call for, we must strive to deliver. The new government of the SAR should deliver concrete outcomes and live up to people's expectations, give top priority to meeting the aspirations of the whole community, especially ordinary people, and act with greater resolve and take more effective steps to address existing problems so that more fruits of development will reach all people in Hong Kong in a more equitable way. Each and every one of them will have greater confidence that as long as they work hard, they are fully capable of making a difference for themselves and their families. Fourth, jointly uphold harmony and stability. Hong Kong is the common home for all its people, and a harmonious family will always prosper. Having gone through ups and downs, people have learned the hard way that Hong Kong must not be destabilized and cannot afford to see chaos. There is extensive consensus that no time should be lost in Hong Kong's development and that all interference should be removed so that Hong Kong can stay focused on development. Everyone living in Hong Kong, regardless of their profession or belief, is a positive force for the development of Hong Kong and can contribute their due share to Hong Kong's development as long as they genuinely support the policy of one country, two systems, love Hong Kong, and abide by the basic law and the laws of the SAR. I hope all Hong Kong compatriots will vigorously promote the mainstream values that are centered on love of our country 
and love of Hong Kong and consistent with the policy of one country, two systems carry forward the tradition of inclusiveness, solidarity, common ground without uniformity, perseverance, and I can do spirit and work together to create a better life. In particular, we should care about young people. When young people thrive, Hong Kong thrives. When, Hong, when young people grow, Hong Kong grows. When there is a future for young people, there is a future for Hong Kong. We should help the young gain a keen appreciation of the underlying trend in both our country and the world and heighten their sense of national pride and ownership. We should help young people overcome difficulties in education, employment, business startup and home buying and create more opportunities for them to grow and shine. It is our earnest hope that all young people in Hong Kong will join efforts to build a better Hong Kong and write a splendid chapter in their life with a youthful vigor. Fellow compatriots, dear friends, a line from a Chinese poem reads, how I wish I could soar the sky on the borrowed wings of a yellow crane. The great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation has become an irreversible historical process. Ensuring the continued success of the practice of one country, two systems in Hong Kong is an integral part of this historical process. We are convinced that on the new journey of realizing our country's second centenary goal, Hong Kong, with the strong support of the great motherland and the solid implementation of the policy of one country, two systems, will surely achieve even greater accomplishments and share, together with fellow compatriots of the motherland, the glory of great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Thank you.